Human civilization hides things from itself. However, sometimes it leaves clues behind that point towards what is being hidden. Finding or understanding what is being hidden could be profound or not. Perhaps that's not what really matters though, but instead what the initial motivations were for hiding said thing in the first place. And furthermore, in the case of this list especially, why were clues left behind? The entire context surrounding these reasons actually seems like it would always be the most profound knowledge to acquire, even in comparison to what is being hidden itself. What information are the Greeks hiding on an ancient disc that to this day remains undecipherable? Why do entire languages exist that seem to belong to no one? Why are they there? And where do they come from? And finally, where is Nicolas Cage when you need him the most? Let's crack open this list of the top 10 messages and codes that have never been solved. Number 10. The Shugboro Inscription. I'm sure many of you spend your days wandering through the grounds of Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire, England. Well, maybe not. But Charles Darwin and Charles Dickens certainly did. And within these grounds, carved onto a monument, was an uncrackable code. The solution to which even eluded the great minds of those two Charlies. On the monument, there is a strange sequence of letters carved by an unknown person in the 18th century. The letters are D-O-U-O-S-V-A-V-V-M and they're written in a way that looks like it's someone yelling angrily in a text message while they emphasize each word individually. But back to the point, no one has been able to figure out what these letters mean for over 250 years. They're just there. But there are clues which could be useful, as clues usually are pretty useful. I think I'm about to mispronounce some things. The monument itself is a carving of Poisson's painting, The Shepherds of Arcadia which depicts three shepherds pointing to a tomb. In the original painting, a Latin inscription on the tomb reads, begin quote, I am even in Arcadia, end quote. Once again, all caps trying to yell, and one of the shepherds is pointing at the letter R. But on the monument version, the image is reversed, and the shepherd is now pointing at the N, as in Nathan, as somebody has deliberately broken his finger and fixed it into this new place. That's kind of weird. Now, you may think this could be the work of an old-timey vandal, and you could be right. Perhaps this was just an 18th century graffiti artist, and these mysterious letters spell out BZG was here represented in 1778. But one amazing theory actually connects this carving to the myth of the Holy Grail, and BZG never did that. It was believed that the painter Poisson was a member of the Priory of Sion, which I talked about in my top 10 secret societies video. A secret society which, until being dissolved in 1956, had been going since the 11th century. And they were a little bit weird. In a book called The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, it was speculated that Poisson's painting contained a message about the Grail's location at that time and the amendments to Shugborough Monument, they point to its possible resting place today. And now, a lot of people just kind of know that the Holy Grail is a special thing, but what exactly is it? Well, apparently it's some combination of Celtic lore and Christian things having to do with the Bible and the Last Supper of Jesus, whereby he either drank out of it at the Last Supper or appeared as a apparition and did some things. It just depends upon what you're reading at the time. Basically, it just appears and does magical things. And if you drink out of it, it gives you special powers, all sorts of cool stuff. So it's a pretty badass thing to have. Now, another thing having to do with the Holy Grail, um, if you've ever heard the show or the place Oak Island, well, some people think that the Holy Grail is buried there. And that'd be cool to find the Holy Grail, you know, we find an object that we can now use to kind of verify all these stories and lore that we've heard, maybe. But the Holy Grail is also supposed to be buried with 
the Ten Commandments, allegedly. And finding the Ten Commandments would be pretty crazy just to kind of see all that stuff written in stone according to the Old Testament in person. And it would just link our present beliefs or some people's present beliefs with the past in a tangible way. It'd be pretty ground shaking. So that's why the Holy Grail is so important. Let's move on. Number nine, Beale's Buried Treasure. And although you don't know it yet, you might actually know who this Beale is. Anyways, an old Virginia story once told of a man in the early 19th century known only as Beale, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing. This man reportedly owned enough treasure to fill two whole wagons. And now unlike you and I, and probably most people, who would have just taken this treasure to the nearest burlesque-themed casino stripper bar, if such a place exists, and I'm sure one does, Beale apparently just buried his two wagons of treasure in the ground, and it remains there to this day. It's almost like, why even have the treasure if you're just gonna put it in the ground? Like, you could have done cool stuff with it. Like, well, I guess they didn't have, like, really cool electronics or video games or 4K screens back in the 19th century, so maybe you really couldn't buy that, that much cool stuff besides, like, a mansion or a big boat, but it wouldn't be a speedboat. So, this is probably one of those old wives' tales where there's a lame moral about possessions or something, right? Well, not necessarily. After burying the treasure, Beale left a small locked box with the local innkeeper and then left town forever. Well, the innkeeper, I guess, got pretty curious, as I think anyone would, and he opened the box years later and found three indecipherable letters. I mean, I guess all my letters would probably be indecipherable too if my best friend was an innkeeper and I'd been drinking all day, but no, these were written in a code. The innkeeper's friend managed to crack the first and discovered that not only was the treasure buried somewhere in Bedford County, but that the hall consisted of thousands and thousands of pounds of gold, silver, and jewels, which would be worth around $63 million today. Now the other two letters, which are as of yet still unsolved, probably contain further information about where this treasure is buried, although personally I think it'd be funnier if the final letter turned out to be an essay on why most people in history were never dumb enough to bury their treasure. Because seriously, even pirates weren't that stupid. And when I tell you who this guy actually is, it's just not going to make sense. Anyways, if you want to attempt to find this century-old hoard, then you can join the other treasure hunters who dig up parts of Bedford County illegally even to this day. Maybe you'll even get a TV show where they film you doing this. But then unfortunately on your TV show, because you're not really making any progress on finding the treasure at all, you have to exaggerate things you've found or other people already have, or just make things up. Or you could try the smarter approach and try to solve the letters. The first letter was solved when the innkeeper's friend discovered that the cipher key was in, and this is when we need Nicolas Cage, the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Oh, and what was Beale's full name? Thomas Jefferson Beale. Number 8. The Physos Disc. The Physos Disc is a large circular object made of clay which contains important information, hopefully, about ancient Greece. Basically, if ancient Greece had a bunch of movies, this is what they would have stored it on. It's that equivalent. The disc was discovered on the Greek island of Crete in 1906, and it has 242 mysterious symbols stamped into it in a spiral. But we have no idea what they mean. However, we may have another ancient artifact which can tell us. In 1990, several large clay tablets dating back to 1800 BC were excavated on the same island, and they contained another undecipherable set of symbols. Well, for a while. The two styles of writing were named Linear A and Linear B, and Linear B was cracked in the 1950s. Linear A shares many symbols with Linear B, but trying to solve it using the same processes results in just gibberish. What's with the Greeks making their ancient writings harder to crack than a copy of SimCity? Not that I've ever tried to do that, but... Anyways, uh, there are some similarities between the Phasus disc and Linear A. 
which is why some archaeologists believe if we solve one, we can solve both. So what information lies within these ancient Greek tablets? Have we stumbled upon an ancient way of speaking not seen for nearly four millennia? Probably. So what fantastical knowledge might we uncover? Well, the ancient Greeks were responsible for some of the fundamental components of modern philosophy, mathematics, and physics, so there could be some world-changing ideas in these tablets. Or maybe it could be just as boring as the information we found after deciphering the information on Linear B, which contain records of wool, sheep, and grain storage. Very strange, but it's not gonna change your life. Number seven, the dead dropout. He was a high school dropout from St. Louis. He had a criminal record for statutory rape, and he was still living with his mom. Basically, you'd be just as likely to find him working at McDonald's as he would be talking to Dr. Phil. So why is this man on a list of uncracked codes when his life seems like one incredibly sad and depressing story? Well, the reason actually has more to do with his death. Ricky McCormick's corpse was found 15 kilometers from his home in a field in West Alton, Missouri. Nobody knows how he got there as he didn't own a car and nor was transport to the area available. No official cause of death was ever determined as his body was too badly decomposed and he was only identified by his fingerprints. But inside Ricky's pockets were two pieces of paper. Each was a note containing an unknown code. What else did you think it would contain? Which mostly consisted of jumbled letters and numbers. McCormick couldn't have written these complex notes because he was dyslexic. His mother said he struggled to even write his own name. So who did write them, and what do they say? The FBI ended up posting the codes online in a request for help solving this cold case, but still, as of yet, nobody has come forward with anything useful. The current operating theory pegs McCormick as some kind of courier, and the layout of the note suggests a list. He had a history with drugs, so perhaps this was a list of coded suppliers. But if that's true, then why was he killed? An alternative theory states that Ricky did actually write these notes and that dyslexia caused him to simply write a jumbled arrangement of the words in his head. Unfortunately, it's unlikely we'll ever know what these notes say and who was responsible for the end of Ricky McCormick's tragic life. Move on to something a bit happier. Number six, the secret Chinese millions. In 1933, seven gold bars were issued to a man named General Wang. Now, as you all know, I'm a bit too classy to make a joke about his name, so let's just simply move on. The gold bars were representative of metal certificates which linked to a significant bank deposit in an unknown US bank. How significant? $300 million. That's pretty significant. Unless you're Bill Gates, who uses 300 million every morning to wipe away breakfast milk from his mouth. Nobody knows where this mysterious 300 million is, if it indeed exists at all, but clues are to be found in some strange inscriptions on the gold bars themselves. They contain a combination of pictures, Chinese writing, and cryptograms in Latin letters. If you want, you can actually go online and analyze these cryptograms for yourself. As the gold bars have been scanned by the International Association for Cryptologic Research, but nobody has yet been able to verify the true meaning of the codes. Still, do they genuinely reveal the location of the $300 million, which has just been untouched for nearly a century? Or is it all fake? Like that Chinese version of Super Mario Wonderful I bought featuring Snow White and Captain Crunch. And if it was fake, why was it fake? Number five, the Rohan Codex. One of the most confusing books of all time is the Rohan Codex. This old Hungarian text is written in an insane mix of old Hungarian runes, letters, and symbols, which, like the lyrics of every, like the lyrics of every Little Wayne song ever, have so far resisted any attempt at translation. The Rohan Codex surfaced in the 18th century, and scholars have no idea who wrote it, or why. The Codex features 448 pages, and also contains illustrations of religious and military scenes. 
These scenes occasionally use religious iconography found in Christianity, Hinduism, and Islam, leading some to speculate that it could be written in an early Hindi language rather than Hungarian. But the crazy fact about this text is that it contains more unique characters than any major language outside of Chinese, which obviously makes this a particularly complex code to crack. I mean, just what was this? Number four, the Vonich Manuscript. In 1912, American bookseller Wilfred Vonich discovered a book filled with plant diagrams and astronomical imagery, along with some other pretty weird stuff. It was written in a language he couldn't understand, and after consulting several language experts, it was actually revealed that this was written in a language or script that was, and still remains, completely unknown to modern linguists. But so what? The images in the book are pretty straightforward, aren't they? Plants, herbs. We can make an educated guess about the book's content, right? Wrong. Why? Because the plants and species contained in the Vonich manuscript do not match any known species on Earth. Carbon dating traces the book's origin to the early 15th century, and in addition to the biological drawings contained in its 240 pages of mysterious content, there are images of humans in long tubular structures, diagrams of planets not known at the time of writing, and many other weird and unidentifiable diagrams, to put it simply. The book is now believed to be a pharmacopoeia, which I would pronounce wrong if it wasn't for Google Translate, by some, which is a collection of techniques and recipes used by medieval alchemists and doctors. But if it was just that, why is it in such a complex code? Does it contain ancient cures and remedies lost to history? Maybe you'd like to take a look at the book yourself and try to crack it via the Yale University website, but it might take you a while. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. And if you really did it, you and I are both going to Vegas on me. I'm not saying my awesome followers couldn't crack the code. I'm you know, sure you could, except for the ones who make fun of my hair. I don't think you're smart enough to do it. But anyways, for the rest of you, maybe you should just watch the rest of the video and take a little inspiration first. Especially because this is a code that even stumped the British code breakers who smashed the German World War II Enigma machine. And if Benedict Cumberbatch can't crack it, nobody can. Number three, Elgar's Secret Symphony? Edward Elgar is one of the greatest composers ever to have lived. If you don't believe me, just listen to any version of Nimrod, the classical composition, not the Green Day album, and tell me the hairs on your neck don't stand up so fast they just fly straight off your skin. So on a list of history's most mysterious unsolved messages, even if it's only for the fact that his most popular work contained hidden secrets woven into the score. Now rappers might lay down a cryptic insult in a diss track, but Edward Elgar was way ahead of those jerks. Plus, he was a nice man. His Enigma variations work still fascinates musicians today, as each variation within the piece actually refers to one of his friend's personalities, but in a musical way. That's so cool. I want to make a Facebook app like that. Elgar was fascinated by codes, ciphers, and riddles. However, it isn't his Enigma variations which we're interested in. It's a piece of work which may have not been heard by a single person on Earth, or Jupiter, or the Planet of the Apes, or anywhere for that matter. On July 14th, 1987, Elgar sent an encrypted letter to Dora Penny, which is now known as the Dorabell Cipher. Miss Penny was a friend of Elgar and 17 years his junior. But anyways, basically one of the greatest composers of all time was in the friend zone. So was this a letter of love? Did he plead to her that he just totally wasn't like the other guys? Or was it something more amazing? Maybe he could predict the future, just like the guys in the last video could. The note contains 87 characters over three lines, made up of 24 symbols, each of which consists of one, two, or three semicircles pointed in one of eight directions. A musicologist attempted to interpret the note as written in the English language, but others believe it was written in an entirely different sort of language, the language of music. The eight positions of the semicircles could represent notes of the musical scale, 
which means this could be a code for a hidden melody written by Elgar, presumably and possibly one so beautiful that he sent it to the one woman he's sacred. Oh, the air conditioning. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes the air conditioning in my house turns on and rumbles from the ceiling and it affects my mic and it gets picked up in the background. So I get angry when it turns on randomly. But back to the story. Okay, so Elgar presumably wrote a secret melody that could have been his most beautiful work ever, but we don't know. And he sent it to the one woman he loved, although she didn't love him back. And that's really sweet. I'm really glad the air conditioning's off now. Number two, the Zodiac 340 letter. The Zodiac Killer was a serial murderer responsible for the deaths of five people in Northern California in the 1960s and 1970s. Unlike his name suggests, he didn't kill people who believe in astrology, because if he did, I'd shake his hand. The Zodiac Killer was implicated in the murders of 28 further victims, as well as those we don't even know of. And he claimed in letters to police to have killed as many as 37. So why don't we know for sure? Well, the Zodiac has never been caught, and the letters he sent out to the police and the press were more deeply encrypted than a Catholic priest's hard drive. Between 1966 and 1974, Zodiac sent more than 20 coded messages. The first was actually quite simple, and after being published in the press, was cracked by a history teacher and his wife. Ooh, that's gonna be kind of embarrassing when you're a serial killer. However, the following letters did become more complex. Most were cracked using a cipher included in one of his letters, but the Zodiac then used three other ciphers, none of which have been solved to this day. The letters that haven't been decoded are believed to hint at the killer's identity. Actually, his most famous message, a 340 character cipher sent on November 8th, 1969, is suspected to be the jackpot. And in 2012, a man called Corey Starlipper claimed to have solved the code. And his interpretation revealed the name Lee or Lay Allen. And one of the major Zodiac suspects was named Arthur Lay Allen. Ugh! You guys almost had it. Starlipper's code break has been dismissed by experts and the authorities, and the case remains unsolved. So who was the Zodiac killer? Is he still alive today? And what did he think about the movie that was made about him? Do you think it was good? And if this person is still alive today, do they dread the day that someone actually cracks their code and uncovers the Zodiac's true identity? I mean, after the guy had his code solved by a history teacher and his wife, he made it more difficult, and then he put ciphers in, and then when they figured out the ciphers, he made the ciphers more complicated. And so if his most famous message was indeed his most famous, it was probably one of his most complex or basically unsolvable ones. Because I don't think the guy is gonna actually leave a clue unless he's, well, okay, maybe he would do that. Criminals can be weird sometimes. And number one, Cicadia 3301. Okay, you, you may have heard of this one before, pretty common, but have you heard the full story? The beginnings of Cicadia 3301. No? All right. Well, tune in. There is only one place on the internet where something this strange would originally appear. Got any guesses? All right, time's up. It's 4chan. If you haven't been to 4chan before, after this video, go to Google and search for it. You need to see it once in your life. Anyways, things kicked off on January 5th, 2012, when an anonymous user posted this black and white image on the random board. As you can see from the image, it says, Hello, we're looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There's a message hidden in this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. There's only three things capable of sending the internet into complete meltdown. Sexy photos of Emma Watson, Half-Life 3 release dates, and puzzles. One person ignored the first two, I'm not sure how, 
and actually crack the first code. Joel Erickson is a Swedish computer analyst, and after discovering information with the very pixels of this image, he found a second clue related to, you guessed it, Julius Caesar. Having figured out that this related to Caesar's own personal cipher system, he moved from clue to clue, solving puzzles related to art, literature, philosophy, and science. But then things started to go global. Apparently Cicadia 3301 was a little bit bigger than just 4chan. Dispense were directed towards physical clues taped to telephone poles in 14 cities around the world. I'm not sure how some of these people had time to go visit all these either. And those still playing the game now started to wonder what kind of organization is actually behind such a venture. Nobody really knows of any individuals who successfully solved all of the clues. As the final stage, Joel Erickson reached was a tour website, which carried a message expressing disappointment that nobody had tried to solve the puzzle on their own instead of collaborating. A month after the first puzzle was posted, a new message appeared on the 4chan boards. I'm still not really sure why you would go to 4chan to look for intelligent individuals, but this one said, read it as I say it, we have now found the individuals we sought. Thus, our month-long journey ends. New puzzles followed in January 2013 and 2014, but were strangely absent in January of 2015. Will they ever reappear again in the future? Who knows? But clearly the group behind this mysterious message has a reason to attract such intelligent individuals, specifically from 4chan. <laughs> Some believe that Cicadia 3301 is a recruitment tool for a spy agency such as the CIA or MI6, or perhaps a multinational banking corporation hiring the next generation of cryptographers. Some people even believe it's all part of a PR stunt for some kind of game or movie. That would mean that it'd be about a three and a half year long PR stunt so far. And that would be pretty badass. But let's all face it, when the producers of Lost tried something only one tenth as complicated, although they did not post on the 4chan boards, it turned into a steaming hot mess, which unfortunately didn't even include sexy photos of Emma Watson. So this is clearly something beyond the realm of Hollywood. We may never know who left these mysterious messages, what lies beyond the final puzzle, and what happens to the winners. But maybe that's the point. So you basically just watched an entire episode of me on TV. Wow. Assuming you didn't cheat and skip ahead like some sort of, well, I'm trying to keep this G-rated mostly, but I gotta say, I applaud your dedication to me. I wish I could think of something cooler to say, but I hope that suffices. I feel like I could ramble here because you just spent this much time watching this video, but I'm gonna try not to do that, although I probably will. If you made it this far and you watched this video soon after it came out, then you probably already saw the 10 biggest predictions with mysterious accuracy video, as it was the last one I put out, and it was also quite long but also quite badass. But if you are watching this in the future, you should go ahead and watch that one. That's why the link has been here the entire time I've been talking. Either that, or I've added another link retroactively to the side, which is why there's a space there at least currently, as I record this and you watch this. So since you made it this far, I'm gonna let you in on some ridiculously exciting news. I know, I usually don't sound that enthusiastic. Very soon, I'm gonna be testing out a new type of content. It'll be very similar to what I've been doing, but I wanna add in a bit more validity, while at the same time exploring topics with a mysterious aura around them, and at a depth that, well, no one else has done before. However, it could be much more than that. We're just gonna spice things up in a lot of ways. The primary goal is to blow your mind even more. I know, you probably didn't think that was possible, and it may not be. That's why this different type of content is only going to be a test. I will still probably sound, uh, I'll just use the phrase, very tired towards the end of the voiceover if it 
does happen to be very long, which is something I don't plan on doing again. And yes, I will still be making fun of celebrities. Why? It's obvious. Because if I can do a better job of blowing your mind than Morgan Freeman can while still doing that, then I've found my life's purpose. An example of a video coming out as the first one in this test will be the one after the next video. It's going to be about the mysteries of love. Yes, I said that. Because love is a beautiful thing. So it's not going to have things in it you've heard on YouTube before or anything like that. Or ever even heard in your life before. Instead, it's going to have things like how nature tries to kill you if you are not in love. Anyways, if that sounds as screwed up to you as it did to me when I discovered it, then hopefully you've already subscribed so you don't miss that video. And yes, there are other topics that aren't as depressing, yet still just as fascinating, that are going to be in that video too. Okay, I'm done here.